Today's video was brought to you by Aniba.com. Aniba.com is a digital marketplace with over 20,000 digital products. And with an ever expanding library, it's the go to point for all your gaming needs. Aniba will bring you the hottest deals in the market on titles new or old, and with an excellent Trustpilot score, you can buy with confidence. So, whether you play on Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, or PC, you're sure to find something that suits your needs. Navigation of the website is very easy search via operating system game genre and region. You can also create your own wish list and grab those deals at a later time. Aniba is here to help with product activation, payment, product delivery and other issues should the need arise with their 24-7 live support. So save some money and grab a great deal with Aniba.com. Welcome back to the channel guys. So there's been a quite a lot of controversy about Intel i9 13th and 14th gen stability issues. And this is mainly due to I don't know, say motherboard power limits kind of exceeding uh, Intel's specification. Now I'm just gonna do a comparison with my everyday settings versus um, some official settings from the Intel i9 4900KS. That would be the performance settings. And I'll be running slightly over the extreme settings, which I use for every day. So I'm using BIOS 1202. It's actually brought into effect an Intel baseline profile, but I wouldn't recommend users that it really does gimp your CPU and you're not going to get what you paid for. But for everyday settings, um, Susan XMP, but uh, DDR5 8400 MHz. So I put two of my P cores to 6.3 GHz, the rest at 5.9. I put all my E cores to 4.6 GHz. Um, in terms of uh, low line calibration, level six, internal. Power limit. Now I use 500 on the ICC Max. This basically stops things from throttling. You can put it to 511.75 and it will never throttle. That basically makes like unlimited, which I don't want to use. Uh, long duration package limit is at 340. The actual KS Extreme profile is 320, but because my cooler can handle a bit more, I've put it to 340. Uh, the package power window is for how long you stay at your short power duration limit, then it will switch to your long, but because they're both the same, really this number has no bearing. And of course, the short duration is also 340. So this is what I use pretty much every day. Um, in terms of the performance power profile that the KS officially launches with, it should be 307 on the uh, ICC Max and 253 on the long duration and the short duration. So this is what you're really meant to be using. This should avoid all issues with like stability and crashing, um, but it could be a cost of performance because of that. And I want to investigate that now. So I'm not changing any of my settings. Everything's the same, 4.6 on the E cores, 5.9 on all the P cores bar the two um, cores that can boost all the way up to 6.3. Uh, DDR5, 8400 megahertz at 1.435 volts. And that is pretty much it. So I'm just gonna do some synthetic, one synthetic test maybe and a few benchmarks in game and maybe a few CAN benchmarks to see if there's any difference in performance. So kicking things off with Cinebench R23. It's gonna let these two tests run the multi core test and then I'll show you the results. As you can see, fully maxing out the 340 watt power limit I've set. And on the other side, you can see you're hitting 253 power uh, as the limit, but that actually comes at a cost of, of performance. As you can see, 43113 with 340 watt and 38323 with a 253 watt power limit. So it does actually affect your multi-core performance at least. Moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I will be using 1080p as the resolution as just to make things more CPU bound, as well as the lowest preset, just to make sure things are as CPU bound as possible. Now, almost instantly you can see there's a difference in performance. There's a difference in power draw and there's a difference in the core clock speed even though 
all the core clocks were set to the same um, speed in the BIOS because there is only 500, there's 500 amps on the Extreme Profile on the ICC Max, which is allowing the Intel i9-4900KS to keep its core clocks stable. Whereas the 307 amps on the ICC Max on the Performance Profile doesn't seem to be quite enough to stabilize those same clock speeds. So that is the trade-off that you get for using uh, the performance profile. Yes, you'll save some heat. Yes, you'll consume less power, but your core clocks are gonna be lower on average. And uh, as a result, you're gonna lose performance. The 253 watt setting is not really a concern while you're in games because hardly, I don't really know any game that's going to use that. Um, it's more the ICC max amp voltage that needs to be increased. If I was to increase that to maybe 400, that will probably do the job. So you can still use 253 watts, just increase the, the amps. But these are the results. So you can see that the performance profile scored 363 on average, whereas the extreme profile scored 388 FPS on average. That's a 25 FPS difference, so that's quite significant. Next up is F123. Again, I will be playing at a resolution of 1080p just to keep things CPU bound as possible. CAA, no DLSS or anything like that. With the ultra low preset, as you can see, I'm just going to scroll down so you can see all the settings, but just your ultra low preset just to keep things the CPU bound as possible and I'll be using the in-game benchmark on the Miami circuit in the TV pod Okay, the results are in. So it's more of the same, um, a difference again in performance. 31 FPS difference, so 495 average on the extreme profile and 464 on the average um, for the uh, performance profile. And uh, even the minimums have improved as well. So definitely a loss in performance for using the performance profile. So next up is Horizon Forbidden West. I'm going to quickly show you the settings again, playing at 1080p again to keep things CPU bound as possible using DLAA. In terms of graphics, I'm using the very low preset. So I'm going to be basically using an in-game run rather than a CAN benchmark just to see if there's any difference while you're actually playing. And as you can see, it's just more of the same. Considerable difference in performance, considerable difference in power draw as well. You can see that the extreme profile using almost 50 watts extra than the performance profile. And that does net you some extra performance on average, getting over 20, 24, 25 plus ex extra for that. So you're certainly getting something for that extra power draw, whether you feel it's worth it is down to you. Funny thing about NVIDIA GPU boost is even if you use the same overclock, your GPU is at the same temperature, there can sometimes still be a little difference in the clock. So as you can see, the extreme profile 
is running at 3.075 megahertz whereas the performance profile is running at 3.060 megahertz so um not that 15 megahertz is going to make up over 20 fps that would just be impossible but it's just worth noting but yeah you're definitely going to lose out on some performance because the core clocks just can't stabilize at 307 amps unfortunately you need at least probably 400 or more to keep 5.9 gigahertz on the i9-4900KS so a clear improvement with the extreme profile you're just gonna have to deal with the extra power draw and the heat for that so final game now cyberpunk 2077 once again running at 1080p although this game is pretty cpu bound without ray tracing so i don't need to use a low profile high is sufficient also comes with validity effects so um it's actually using upscaling at 1080p but as you can see everything is at high also the hybrid cpu utilization actually performs better in cpu bound scenarios at auto which uses the e cores so that's why i've chosen it but again we find ourselves in a similar similar scenario basically um, an increase in performance due to being able to maintain the higher core clocks but there is a significant increase in power draw with that over 60 watts you can see using over 200 watts on the extreme profile while using under 150 watts on the performance profile and there's almost a 10 degree difference in te the temperatures as well so all of these things you need to consider is it worth the trade-off but in terms of performance i would say you're going to net yourself an extra 10 to 11 fps on average by going from the extreme profile to the performance profile with, with a cpu like this so it's worth considering um is it worth saving the power and reducing the temps or do you want the extra performance it's not going to be for everyone though and especially if you have instability issues um you may need to definitely reduce uh the the maximum power draw in, in watts and the amps is something you're going to have to play with though the icc max just to see if you can squeeze out a bit more to performance but that is pretty much it for me guys hopefully you've enjoyed the video and as always thanks for watching